Hey y'all, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. We're taking a look at the action figures produced for Spider-Man 3, the final installment in the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire trilogy. And look, this isn't going to be my typical video where I just rave about how much I love the action figures and the source material that it's based upon, because I just can't do it. The toys and movie were so close to being great, but to really understand the failings of both, we need to look at the special circumstances surrounding this film and its toy tie-ins. But all is not lost, because there was one toy line that did this movie justice with a diverse cast that included the most important character in the film, this guy. So stick around for a look at Bully McGuire in miniature plastic perfection. After the remarkably faithful origin story of the first film, and the emotionally packed complexity of the second, director Sam Raimi had to be feeling some pressure to outdo himself with the third installment. The strength of the first two films, the character development of emotionally conflicted heroes and villains who were neither all good nor all bad, gets thrown to the wayside as the movie studio, Sony, forced Raimi's hand and had him try to make three movies in one. This would have been a good movie if it had centered on Harry Osborn's desire to avenge his father by killing the man he held responsible, his oldest friend, Peter Parker. It would have been a great movie if it focused on the redemption of the man retconned into being Uncle Ben's actual killer, small-time hood-turned-sandman, Flint Marco, a misunderstood foil desperately trying to save his dying daughter. And it would have been a spectacular movie if it had centered around the Daily Bugle and the budding rivalry between two photojournalists who both spend time possessed by the alien symbiote, leading to a climactic battle between Peter, Brock, and Venom. Instead, it tried to do all of these things, and felt lacking because of it. Instead of letting their brilliant director continue to tell his story, the studio got involved and muddied things up. Don't get me wrong, I still love this movie. The visuals were incredible, and it was so close to being awesome. But even Sam Raimi himself admitted, quote, We tried to stuff 10 pounds of story into a 5-pound bag. Meanwhile, things were just as complicated on the action figure side, as Toy Biz, who had been producing Marvel action figures since the early 90s, had its licensing agreement with Marvel Entertainment revoked in December of 2005, one year before the contract was set to end. As a result, Marvel had to pay Toy Biz a $16 million termination fee. But don't feel too bad for Mary Marvel. They immediately signed a $205 million deal with toy giant Hasbro that included an upfront, non-refundable, $100 million advance. I'm no math major, but... So with this change, there were bound to be some hiccups. And as the Spider-Man 3 toys were Hasbro's first big release, we saw them having to learn on the fly. If you want to help us grow the channel, hit that join button. For the price of a cup of coffee per month, or one Marvel Legends figure for the whole year, you get access to exclusive unboxing videos and inside information on all our upcoming plans. So Hasbro takes over the license from Toy Biz. Toy Biz had given us five years of Marvel Legends in the six inch scale, as well as two complete series of Spider-Man movie figures at six inches. So when Hasbro gets the license, what do they decide to do? They come out with these. Five inch figures of Spider-Man, their first release when they got the Marvel line. And you talk about just spitting in the eye of collectors. Everything that we had collected before this was now no longer in scale. It's pretty frustrating, but I have to admit, these actually are not the worst toys. And Hasbro is a toy company. They are not a collector company. And so let's take a look at what they actually did with some of these figures. They're not bad. You know, they've got good paint applications. They actually have a lot 
of articulation for a figure in this scale. They Each one of these Spider-Men are different. Of course, they all have a different play feature. This appears to be the super articulated one because it has all of the different joints that you would expect. He's got a gripping hand and a thwippy hand. He's got ball jointed hips. I mean, this is pretty great for five inches. It's just that we hadn't been collecting five inch figures since the 90s when Toy Biz was doing animated figures. Everything had switched over to six inches. And so this was really, really frustrating when you're looking at figures that now no longer fit in with any of the rest of your collection. But I have to admit, they did do a really nice job with these. Uh, not only did they give us multiple versions of Spider-Man in his Spider-Man 3 costume, but we also got the black suit Spider-Man, the symbiote Spider-Man. And he came as the regular super articulated version. We got like a shiny, almost foil version as a Walmart exclusive. And we got this pretty cool black suit Sandman version where he's uh, he's like got a power punch action, but he clearly has the sand effects on him, which is, which is kind of cool. I will also give Hasbro credit in this line for giving us all of the villains from the different movies. So we got a Green Goblin from the first movie. And, you know, that's not bad. It's, you know, again, it's got a pretty good articulation. Decent sculpting, a pretty good head sculpt, considering the size. From Spider-Man 2, we got Dr. Octopus. This one's maybe not the greatest. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that head sculpt. But he does have all of his movable arms, and he's got articulated ends on, on his different mechanical arms there. And then from Spider-Man 3, we got the three main villains in the movie. Sandman, and I would argue this is one of the best Sandman figures that we got. Super cool, like power punch action on both of his sand arms. We got the new Goblin, the Harry Osborn figure. And truthfully, this is as detailed as the one we're about to see in six inch scale. And of course, a really nice Venom. They did a great job with these paint applications because you can see all of the web lines are raised and each one of them has that silver on there. And again, these are fun toys, but Hasbro also gave us some figures from the Spider-Man 3 video game. And these are much closer to the comic concepts. In fact, in a lot of ways, they're very similar to the Ultimate Comics that were out at the time. Here's a Kraven the Hunter figure. Of course, we got a really nice lizard. He has an articulated jaw and an articulated tail. We've got this kind of high-tech scorpion. Again, this scorpion looks much more like Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley's Ultimate Comics more than it does the classic Steve Ditko 616 scorpion. Shocker, who amazingly continues to get action figures, even though he's wearing a quilt. And a pretty cool Mysterio figure. I actually like this figure. You know, he's got the cool head going on inside the, the classic bubble. Uh, he's got the purple and the green. That actually is a really nice kind of concept piece that came from the Spider-Man 3 video game. But what collectors really wanted was a six-inch line of figures to go with their Marvel Legends and their other Spider-Man movie action figures. And Hasbro finally relented producing this Build-A-Figure wave, but it came out a year after the movie hit theaters. These figures actually debuted at New York Toy Fair in February of 2008, and even back then the comments were, hey, too little, too late. And you can see that Hasbro kind of did a halfway job on this. Let's start with the star of the show, Spider-Man himself. Now, this is a really, really good figure. A great, super articulated Spider-Man. It has a really nice sculpt. It's got good paint details. But it is simply a repaint of the previous Spider-Man 2 superposable figure. It, they didn't even craft a new figure for the Spider-Man 3 movie line. They simply reused the one from Spider-Man 2. And they did that a couple of more times. In order to complete this wave, we had figures of both Doc Ock 
and the Green Goblin. And both of these were repaints where they just really weren't the same level of quality as the previous figures. You can see here that the Green Goblin from Spider-Man 3 is a pretty lousy repaint of the one from the very first Spider-Man movie. The original had this great metallic paint, which really brought out the features and the details in the sculpt, whereas this one just has this kind of flat, matte green paint that just doesn't do this figure any real justice. But that's not all. They also gave us a relatively boring new Goblin figure. There's not a lot of detail going on in the sculpt of this. It does have good articulation, but just not a whole lot else going for it. It's really not any more detailed than the five inch figure that we looked at a moment ago. Along with him, we got the Sandman. He looks a little bit out of proportion here. It's like his shoulders just aren't quite big enough to hold up these giant sand hands. He also has very limited articulation at the hips compared to what the standard was. But where I really struggle with this figure is this facial sculpt. Actually, I take that back. The facial sculpt is really good. You can definitely see Thomas Hayden Church, the actor who played Sandman in there. The problem is with the paint applications. And this was an issue that Hasbro had a lot in their early Marvel Legends lines. There just wasn't enough paint application to bring out the detail that occurred in the sculpting. And nowhere was that more obvious than with their Mary Jane Watson figure. Ooh, boy, I tell you, they're not doing Kirsten Dunst any favors with this figure. Now, let's look at the Mary Jane from the very first Spider-Man movie. Look at how great that head sculpt is. Look at her eyes, how much detail there is. You can even very clearly see the dimple that's coming from her smile. And you see, look, it's, it's asymmetrical. She has the dimple on this side, but not this side. She has a good skin tone. Her hair looks natural. Her lips are look realistic. Oh, and then there's this. I am I, probably the most egregious part of this are those eyebrows. I mean, it's like a child took a crayon and just drew orange caterpillars on the top of her head. To make matters worse, she did come with a base. She came with this, you know, kind of cool Sandman base, which makes absolutely no sense because she did not wear this outfit in Spider-Man 3. This is the dress that she wore at the end of Spider-Man 2 when she was taken prisoner by Doc Ock. So one more incongruency that just makes this figure that much more of an abomination and really, really frustrating because... We get so few figures of our heroines that when we get one, we really need it to be good. And, you know, we were lucky. This one was great. You know, we got this one and it was really good. Oh, I just, that one's just not. One figure that I think actually did come through in this line was the six inch Venom figure. I'm not sure if this was a completely new sculpt or not. It does have those kind of toy biz ball hips, which makes me wonder, was this something that was sculpted prior to the license being handed over to Hasbro? This is a good figure. It has really outstanding paint applications. It's got a terrific venom head. Look at how cool those eyes are. And of course, that tongue and the gaping mouth. He has good size. He actually fits in scale with the other figures. And he does kind of tower over the black suit symbiote Spider-Man figure. Now this one's pretty good too, because again, I really am pleased with how well they did with the paint applications. I mean, look at how great the silver of that spider pops. But this shoulder articulation, you know, the limited articulation, you've got just sort of a single swing elbow. This is just not very spidery. You can't really get this guy into the kind of Spider-Man poses that you want. And it's really limited by this head movement. There is just not much happening with that head. So it's really hard to get him looking right into certain crouching positions because of that. But I do have one surprise in this six inch scale, and that is this figure. Now, 
This thing actually was shown at the 2008 Toy Fair in February of 2008 because I saw it on the display stand, but I have not been able to figure out how this figure was released. I can't remember if it was a Walmart or a Target exclusive. As best as I can tell, there is currently not one available on eBay. And this thing is really cool with the symbiote suit wrapping around Peter's head and it being kind of a half red suit, half black suit. If any of you guys know what the origins of this figure are, I really would appreciate you letting me know in the comments. But of course, the purpose of this line and adding the additional figures was to allow us to have a Build-A-Figure. And what we got was one of the most expensive Build-A-Figures currently on the secondary market, the Sandman. Now, I like this. I think it makes for a terrific display piece. I love the action and the flow of his arms. I think that that yelling head sculpt really, really works. And I think it's a terrific likeness for the actor. Also, this has better paint applications than what we saw on the single carded figure. The main problem with this is it's really much more like a Todd McFarlane toy than it is a Marvel Legend because it, while it does have articulation and you can get him into a few poses, it really is only meant to be in this position. It, it's much more of a slightly movable statue than it is a true action figure, but it does make for a great display when you're putting out your Spider-Man 3 action figures. This Hasbro line for Spider-Man 3 should teach us just how hard it is to create action figures. From sculpting, to getting the proper scale, to production and pain issues, to just trying to please an impossible fan base, it's really hard. And it took Hasbro a while, but after some fits and starts, they had the Return of Marvel Legends line, and since that point, it has been one great wave of amazing figures after another. But there was one company that made Spidey 3 movie figures and nailed it the first time, creating a diverse lineup of characters that covered the full scope of the movie. The Diamond Select Mini Mates, designed by Art Asylum. So here they are, the full lineup of Diamond Select Spider-Man 3 Mini Mates. We don't talk about Mini Mates enough here at Carbon Scoring. There is no other line that has had as many diverse characters as what they have accomplished with Mini Mates. And they're just so cool. They're, they're like Lego Mini Figures, only they have way better articulation. But then they're also like cuter than the type of things that you get from Medicom, like, like these... Spider-Man 3 figures that came out of Japan, and granted, these are pretty cool. I mean, you got New Goblin, Venom, and both versions of Spider-Man, but I just don't think they're quite as adorable as what we see with Mini Mates. Let's grab our hero, Spider-Man. Now, just look at this thing. First of all, it has virtually the same articulation as a Marvel Legends figure. I mean, these hips, you can get him into so many different positions. Even that head is able to be moved around all over the place. And really, really detailed paint applications. This figure even has all of the kind of the mesh that you see on the blue part of Spidey's costume. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And because of their small size, we're able to get so many different versions of each character. Let's take Spidey, for instance. Not only do we get the classic red Spidey in his suit, you get a battle-damaged version where you can see Peter's head peeking out. You can even see the shredded glass of his eyelet there. So, I mean, this is a completely different figure, scratched all the way across the back, still with all of that same detail and articulation. And then we get to see the transformation of Spidey in the symbiote suit. You know, here he is, symbiote suit. I do it wrong every time. Here he is where things are good. You know, we've got a, uh, I imagine if we take this off, yep, there's a happy Peter head underneath, but pretty cool that you get him with his mask halfway up and you get all of that cool silver on black detail. You get a Peter head on the symbiote costume. Pretty cool. And I know that these faces are simplistic, but they really do represent the characters. And I think the hair has a lot to do with that. But then you get 
really cool things like this. And this is what I'm talking about when I say that the Mini Mates are the figure line that truly tell the story of the movie. First of all, notice Peter's hair here. Very, very different from the hair on Peter at this point. I think we know what that represents. But look at how he's ripping off, how the symbiote is like shredding off of him. And it's on both sides. He is doing everything he can. And even with this relatively simplistic facial picture, you get the agony that he's in as the symbiote is tearing itself off of him. Now, of course, we saw all of the different villains that appeared in the film. You've got Flint Marco, the Sandman, and he's a little bit buffer. They've got this added piece that comes across his chest so that he is kind of a bigger figure. Even though they're the same scale and using the same body mold, adding that buffer chest piece just gives him that much more oomph to him. Of course, he has that classic Sandman flat top. And even the the little like lines across his forehead, you know, bring bring a gravitas to this figure. Just give it that much extra. But then look at how they did with the Sandman version. I mean, this thing is so cool. And he still has great articulation even in this sand sculpt. All the way around, you've got the classic Steve Ditko striped shirt. You've got that angry, angry Sandman facial expression. Oh, this is so good. I, I really, I think I love this more than I love all the Marvel Legends figures that we've gotten of him. More villains. Harry Osborn. And man, I tell you, look at what they did with the eyes and those eyebrows and just the lines there. It looks like James Franco. I mean, it really, truly does. And they didn't skimp on the details. He still has the spikes that are on one arm, but not the other. He has the sheath for his sword in the back. He's got his belt and a holster for like a, a phone or something here. He's got a pumpkin bomb that is sculpted just like the movie in his hand. I mean, this thing is like two inches tall and it packs in more detail than what we saw on the six inch Marvel Legends figure of the exact same character. And then we get the full transformation of Eddie Brock. So here's Eddie with his Topher Grace blonde haircut, a little bit perturbed, but he's got his, his tie. He's got his sort of his photojournalist. I've been working at the Daily Bugle thing. He probably came with a camera. I just don't have it anymore. Then you get the transformation, Brock. And again, look at this. Not only is it shredding across his chest and across his back, this is a different sculpt than the one that we see on Peter. So they didn't just repeat it. They actually made a completely different sculpt. But look at the agony as the symbiote comes around his face. I mean, again, this is just a simple, tiny little figure, but it packs more emotion than what we saw with that entire six-inch line. And of course, you're left with Venom. Very nice. Again, he's got the chest piece that gives him a little bit more bulk. Uh, he's got slightly bigger feet, I think, which makes him a little bit taller than Spidey. And he has different hands from the other mini mates, which gives him that claw look. But I really love what we've got going on with that head sculpt. Again, just these simple block heads, but they're able to get so much out of it. Now, one of the biggest things that I was impressed with with the mini mates line is we actually got some of our other characters, including Mary Jane Watson. And she's still got a little bit of orange caterpillars for uh, eyebrows, but I would argue that this is a more attractive figure than the last one we saw. Plus, she is actually wearing clothes that she wore in Spider-Man 3. And we get a figure of Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. And just look at that smile. Look at, look at how serious MJ is, because she goes through a lot of trauma in this movie, whereas Gwen is kind of the, the fun-loving sort of, you know, kind of just new to everything, and so very Gwen with the, the boots and the skirt. Just really a classic Gwen that not only represents the movie, but also represents what she looks like in the comics. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Bully McGuire. Oh, check it out. 
Look at that bad emo attitude. Look at that hair brushed down in front of his face. He's got his black symbiote suit on underneath his jacket. He's got on his blue jeans. This is everything you could want in a Bully Maguire figure. You know, unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to get a six-inch version of Tobey Maguire as Bully Maguire, but I think we can all be pretty satisfied that he did at least happen in action figure form, and here he is, the beloved, the hated, the one and only Bully Maguire. Hey, if you've made it this far, then you will love this video where we look at the history of Spider-Man through the lens of action figures and the unbelievable creators who brought them to life.